Time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. It's crunch time. I have about a week left before I have to have this game finished or cleared off. And, and if, if I don't reach that deadline, then I'm going to have to meticulously record the game state and then recreate it at a future date, which will do two things. One, it will give me um, more work than I want. Uh, and two, it will make for a large break in the game because when when will I get to, to doing it again, you know, with all the moving back in and I'm, I'm also going to have to move my business, all sorts of stuff on my plate coming down the road. So the heat is on in terms of time. I, I It was kind of painful, not really painful, um, I didn't really feel it, but I was aware in my mind last time when uh, Flush decided to get rid of the Portuguese that that was going to um, increase the amount of turns that I'm going to have to play. Not have to, but but have to before before the, 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 the crunch time, before the end of the game. Um, but it needed to happen because that's what he would have done. He Flesh doesn't care that much about me. I mean, he, he respects me, I think, maybe. Um, or maybe he's just being nice. I don't know. But anyway, I should stop talking because I need to get playing. Uh, I might skip on some details. Maybe try to get two turns done a day. We'll see. Maybe do more. We'll see. We'll see. Let's go. So we started the turn, no no empire starting. If you recall, both Giraffe and Flush were able to start empires. Neither of them decided to. Perhaps it's because they didn't have an empire they wanted, or maybe they have something else in mind. We saw before Flush did that in order to get the Russians. Uh, he kept his, his spare empire spot blank so that he could use a civilized action to use that special card in order to steal the Russians from Giraffe. So one of them could be doing that, or they might just not have an empire. We've already done production, the Spanish produced, I won't go too much into that. Um, what was the other thing? Oh yeah, so I didn't show the scoring last last video, so I just want to show how the scoring's going. Um, Giraffe is still gaining on flush, she's only nine points away now. Uh, so there's that, That's a, that's about the news there. Okay, so I've been zooming through the turn at Civilized now. Uh, some stuff has been happening, but the, the main story right now is that uh, the Pharaonic Egyptians were traded to move forward. I think that's the way Runt is going to try to end it. Is She tried going through someone else, but then she realized, oh, they can just discard their empire when they get near the end. So she was just trying to move her own empire forward. Now, the Pharaonic Egyptians, who used to be our cultural... Um, elites for a long time have fallen since they lost the Gamers Guild, funnily enough. Um, and so Giraffe was able to, to hit, her, hit him with an earthquake, which threw him back quite a bit. Um, so they took one step forward and three steps back this turn. So now our, our current leaders are the Spaniards and the modern, uh, modern state here. Still in the civilized phase, just had a bit of interesting card play that have, uh, had pretty large ramifications on the course of the game, so I thought I'd talk to you about it. So first, it's, it began with Flush. It's the Japanese, they're currently the cultural leaders of the game, even though they're stuck on their island there. Uh, maybe because they're spending a lot of time thinking about themselves on their island, they're able to come up with lots of great ideas. Though I would submit they probably need to get ideas from other people in order to produce more ideas themselves. Um, anyway, so he played a rebellion, uh, which destroys... Uh, no, no, that's not the right one. He played urban riots, that's right, um, on the Mongols. Now, the Mongols are run by Giraffe, and she had this blowback card, which allowed her to choose the target of the card. So she chose the Pharaonic Egyptians. Now, that caused all of their their larger cities, which they had several, um, to be reduced and also to be, to be disordered. Now Flush went ahead and continued his kind of one-two punch he was planning. He could have just backed off then, but he figured this is good for him too. So he went ahead and followed it up with Rebellion, which destroyed um, all the units in any disordered area of an empire. So if we take a look at the once mighty Pharaonic Egyptians, and this, this has got to be a big blow to you. I mean, I know it took me a while to kind of cope with this, and you're just finding this out now. You're very used to seeing the Pharaonic Egyptians being this massive presence, um, this hegemony on the board. They were all here. They're not here. They were even up into here. They had moved into Asia. They're not there now. They're just along here. And just a little bit here, even their capital is gone. So a lot of effects there. They lost all their money. They and they were they were the top money maker. They've moved out of Asia. Oh, actually, they still have this elephant there. That's the, theirs. Um, but yeah, 
That was, it was huge, huge play, and he's not even done yet. Flush had a lot of cards because of some some card trickery that card plays that got him cards. We are done with the turn. Oh, one thing happened actually. The Germans are gone. Giraffe decided to discard them. Made some sense. Um, by discarding them, she definitely she greatly increased the score of the Russians. Well, not greatly, but did increase the score of the Russians, and. Um, it, it maybe it will allow her to reposition themselves. If you keep an empire too long without trading and progressing, especially in the way I'm playing, they get too far behind. And then, you know, you see people up here who get these planes and stuff, and you're still back with cannons and whatnot. So it's good to get rid of them. Um, they could have been a military force, maybe, but she would have had to focus on a lot of trading and dealing with stuff like that. And she would really like Flush to be able to score out. Now, she made that decision before the Pharaonic Egyptians got hit so hard, though. It's not looking so good for her now. Without them to back her up, she really has very little board presence. She probably doesn't want to hold on to the Egyptians any longer. Well, I mean, they've got a lot of culture, so that's, that's a tough choice. But they could just get smacked again. Uh, I don't know. Her modern state's not looking too good either. Uh, anyway, back to scoring. So, Draft scored really big. She got 11, I think. So she's she's definitely gaining on flush now. It's getting a lot tighter. Very interesting. I think I might try to get another turn in real quick if I go fast. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. I might I might have to finish it later tonight, but I'll, I'll, I'll get started now anyway. Right, so we're starting a new turn with Start Empire, and everyone's starting empires this turn. Uh, first one's the Persians, and this is getting kind of interesting. So this is Runs Persians. They're heading up northward. They got a free maneuver. Also, who got a free maneuver is the French, which are going to be Flush's new empire. Here, the French, they start with Jack Hammer, otherwise known as Madame Curie. Um, they're heading south, doing an attack right on the Spanish capital in Castile, right off the bat here. So it's going to be a 32, and I think I think Flush really wants to win this one. He doesn't really care. He really likes science, but um, it's going to be 31 to 27, I believe. Let's look at the mountain defense. Yeah, 27. 31 to 27. So it could go either way there. But he's hoping hit her quick, quickly, um, take the Spanish down. Spanish have, have started to score quite a bit for giraffes. So if he can get rid of them, um, especially their capital, which will get rid of their money, they were scoring two points off of that. It's part of the side effect of him uh, getting the Pharaonic Egyptians out of there or damaging them is it helped this, the Spanish score more, uh, both in, I think, Christian locations. It helped Giraffe overall, actually. It helped her in a lot of ways. It helped himself, too, but helped the Mongols have a, have a majority of space spaces and the Spanish have mo more money. And, and they might have scored on being the biggest Christian empire too, I'm not sure. I think the Franco Egyptians still have more spaces than the Spanish. So no. And Flesh's French took it. Giraffe had pretty bad rolls. He beat her on a two to one ratio. Um, and their their die pools weren't that different. She actually got a bigger die pool because she used Mesmerizer to help. I don't really understand Mesmerizer but it uh, it did give her a little bit more. It gave her like a another three points, three more dice to use. But it wasn't enough. Her first, I did I did the rolls in three trials um, because they just the the die pools are too large. Uh, but the first one she just got smashed. Just got smashed. And our final new empire for the the round is the Muggles from Giraffe. There she. She's delivering that unto the world. Um, the Muggles also get a free maneuver, and when I was choosing these, that wasn't that wasn't foremost in my mind, really, because I kind of go through this process through each of them in turn, and it takes a little while. But it was just one of those fun coincidences that they all have these um, starting empires that get free maneuvers, and there are several in the deck too. Um, so that's kind of fun. She's hit, she's using them to hit the Russians here. Uh, she already hit them in Transoxiana, which is where they started. It's kind of hard to um, hold on to a place like that if an empire starts because they just get this big stack. Um, then they got their free maneuver. She's going to, she's probably, unless she gets really bad rolls, uh, going to erase the Russians from both Asia and India. And that will take away, um, that'll take away two points there. 
and one point there. So that will take away three points from flush at the end of the turn if she's able to to maintain that. I think if you could see, the Russians are also going to maneuver, so uh, she doesn't know that. So they could potentially counterattack, but if you look at how they're spread out, that's not going to be very easy unless he has some magical card to help him. And other than the start of the turn, the rest was fairly uneventful, except that it ended with the end of the Japanese. Uh, Flush discarded the Japanese, thereby giving them another slot to work with. Um, maybe wise, I don't know. They were cultural leaders, which is always nice to have a cultural leader, because then, by that I mean the, the uh, an empire with the most wreaths, because then you can, you know, if you get those culture cards, you can beat up on the others. Um, Flush is getting a little scared, though. He needs to make points, and he needs to, to, to dominate. Uh, his Russians are now in trouble. They're no longer scoring what they were. Um, and plus, they are back here in progress. So they're getting a little bit less appetizing as well. And then look, Giraffe is breathing down his neck. So he had already chosen to, to discard the Japanese. Hopefully, he can bring something else in. Um, the French did a good, a nice surprise attack on the Spanish there that helped him out. But the Spanish have reinforced, and they they have trucks, which the, the French don't know how to use yet. They're almost there, but they're, too, they're a little bit away. So, yeah, tough. I, I'm happy, though, that we got so much done today. Uh, we went through two turns when usually we get through one. We'll see how many turns we get next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament 7x7 Ages.